Welcome back to the show. They were the days of the Falcons in red right before the guy with the white shoes played for Atlanta. When the kicker was an ex-bartender and the pre-dome home was Fulton County Stadium. It was the days of Dallas dominance, Super Bowl three of the five years before and part of nine straight playoff seasons in Big D. The year was 1980 and the wild card Cowboys visited the first time ever West champion Falcons. That playoff game, a good one, is tonight's distant replay. Good afternoon, everybody, from Atlanta's Fulton County Stadium. Playoff action this afternoon. The Atlanta Falcons had won their first ever NFC West title and were enjoying their best season in team history when they clashed with the Dallas Cowboys, a perennial powerhouse in the divisional playoff. Atlanta's offensive attack was centered around wide receiver Alfred Jenkins. He wasn't very big, but Jink had a lot of talent. Uh, he could sure get open and had the great speed and catch the football. So we were going to continue to get the ball to him. The Falcons pounced on Dallas's young secondary early and often. Barkowski back to throw. Blitz is coming again. Barkowski is going deep. Has Jenkins wide open. At the 20, at the 10, at the 5. Touchdown! The Atlanta defense then had to stop the Cowboys' chief weapon. That was definitely into our game plan, is find a way to stop uh, Dorsett. The ferocious Falcon defense held Dorsett to 15 total yards in the first half, and Dallas fell behind to upstart Atlanta going into halftime. Falcons were the best team in the NFL that year. I was concerned that if they started off fast and got ahead, that we wouldn't be able to catch up. This was a situation where Danny White now is in at quarterback and replaced Roger Starbuck, and Danny was trying to establish his own go-to guy. I felt uh, confident, although we hadn't done much offensively the whole game. There was a lot of determination in the huddle from a lot of players, and we knew that it was going to take all 11 guys doing their job to get it done. We knew we had to get at least two scores to get back in the game or try to win this thing. Individually, uh, I just felt like if they threw the ball my way, I could get open. The inspired Cowboys drove downfield, and with one wave of White's hand, we're back in the game. The first one was a scramble out of the pocket, and uh, I threw a ball into the midst of four guys, and Drew Pearson went up and made a spectacular catch. And it was probably a ball I never should have thrown. Next thing I know, Danny's scrambling around, and I was standing in the corner in the end zone, and Danny's, like, pointing for me to move, and the whole Falcon defense went where Danny was pointing to, and I kind of stayed where I was. As soon as I caught it, I got hit, uh, but it was a touchdown, and if you catch them and you get hit, they don't hurt. <laughs> we felt the shift in the momentum, and we felt the history, of the aura of the Dallas Cowboys kind of hovering over them. If the defense got us the ball, we felt confident with the offense that we had been moving the ball all the football game. If they got the ball back for us, we could move it downfield again. The tough Cowboys defense stopped Atlanta on third down, setting up Dallas's dramatic final drive. We really felt now we had a chance to win this game. Here come the Cowboys, still with 49 seconds to go. Ball at the 23, 27, 24. Danny White with one running back. Here comes the blitz again. Danny back to throw into the end zone. Caught! Touchdown! Drew Pearson, the Cowboys wide receiver. When I came across the backfield, you know, I'm looking back, and I came off the line, I saw that linebacker disappear, and that means uh, they're blitzing, and that means I'm going to be in man-to-man -man coverage. When I looked back, Danny had already released the ball, and I had to find it. And Roger Staubach, who threw to Drew so many times, just turned around and said, I don't believe it. And I was so damn nervous, I'll never forget that. I mean, I was just positive that disaster was going to set in, and somewhere or another they'd find a way to lose it. And I'll be damned if they didn't. I mean, this is their one chance to make themselves immortal, and they blew it in the last 10 minutes, and there was a crushing silence that fell over this town after that. It was a tough year for me. My father passed away about halfway through the season. I dedicated that season to him. To be able to make those kind of plays in that situation, there's no question in my mind that he was uh, looking over me, looking out for me. And uh, I think that made the difference. 